Hi y'all! My name is Bethany Hatch and I wanted to make this video because I've, there's been a lot of talk regarding the national emergency declared by President Trump this past Friday and I've seen a lot of misinformation being spread from both sides and I think it's important to clarify some of those misconceptions. In order to keep this video short, I'm going to focus on two of the major points that I've seen circulating. The first claim that people are making is that this isn't really a national emergency because President Trump had two years with the majority in Congress and didn't get the wall funding. I think that that's a pretty loaded statement and not entirely accurate. In fact, I went back and looked at bills that had been introduced, and at the end of 2018 alone, there were three different bills that included funding for the wall. Build the Wall, Enforce the Law Act was introduced in, in the House on October 12th of 2018, and it never made it to a vote. The Wall Act was introduced in Senate on December 5th, and it also never made it to a vote. And then on December 20th, the House approved a spending bill with wall money. However, it didn't make it through the Senate. So the existence of these bills alone negate the claim that it wasn't important enough to get the funding, as this shows conservatives did try to acquire the funding for the wall. Secondly, the claim that we had the majority and couldn't pass a bill is a bit misleading, while we did hold the majority in both the House and the Senate, in order for a bill to pass in the Senate, it needs 60 votes. Conservatives held 51 seats at the time. And I use the, cons the term conservative lightly because we had people like Jeff Flake in office who were not really willing to work with the president or other conservatives. So at the time, we would have not only needed all 51 conservatives to vote for the funding, but we would have also needed nine Democrats to support the bill. So this is extremely misleading, and I think it's an attempt to discredit the president's claim that the crisis at the southern border is actually a national emergency. The other comment I've seen circling quite a bit is that President Trump is setting precedent for a Democrat to take away our guns. This fear seems to have stemmed from Nan uh, Nancy Pelosi's threat that a Democrat would be able to use this situation to take away guns or seize fossil fuel. This Fear-mongering technique seems to have wormed its way into people's minds because people are actually believing it. And they're believing that this instance is going to lose is, is going to lead to us losing our guns. So I wanted to take a look at the facts of national emergencies. Woodrow Wilson was the first president to formally declare a national emergency in 1917. Then FDR set president precedent that allowed national emergencies to be called without limiting their scope or duration citing relevant statutes and without congressional oversight. So in 1976, Congress passed the National Emergencies Act. This act ended all previous national emergencies and imposed certain restrictions that a president has to follow when calling a national emergency. Further, Congress has the ability to take steps to undo a declared national emergency. Since the uh, National Emergencies Act was passed, uh, actually since 1979, 58 national emergencies have been called, and 31 of them are actually still in effect. So claiming that Trump's decision sets precedent is nothing more than fear-mongering and misinformation uh, being spread to discredit the president's desire to, secu to secure our borders. I think it's important to realize that the fear our government can subvert the Constitution is very real, but I strongly do not believe it will be Trump who leads them to do it. In fact, if you dig into the National Securities Act of 1947, you can see the powers of the executive branch were greatly increased. So along with presidential executive orders, the executive branch can and has written law using national security directives. While these directives are not legislative in nature, they do have the force of law. The major difference between the two forms of implementing law from the executive branch is that in order to take effect, executive orders must be listed in the Federal Register or Presidential Findings, and they must be made known to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees. While the National Security Directives do not have to be reported, reviewed, or even acknowledged that they exist. And in fact, the Trump administration is the first to demand the publication of the directives in the Federal Register in 2017. In contrast, the Bush administration's first national security presidential directive only became public through a leaked version sent anonymously through the U.S. mail. And attempts to publish a list of unclassified national security directives from the Obama administration was unsuccessful. 
Of the three directives issued by President Trump in January of 2017, the second one, National Security Presidential Memorandum 2, reorganized the National Security Council and the system for, de for decision making. For the first time in history, the president's chief political strategist is invited to attend any meeting of the NSC, and national security presidential memorandas have replaced the policy directive directives categories as they were organized under the Obama administration. And these memorandums have been largely transparent under this administration. So, next time someone accuses Trump of setting a dangerous precedent, remind them that the precedent for national emergencies was set long ago. Thanks for watching. I'd love to know what you think about Trump declaring a national emergency to build the wall. Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like and share.